Hello everyone and welcome to my review of the First Order Troop Transport. Now this set has a lot to offer with quite a heavy priced pack, uh, but you do get yourself seven minifigures, which is quite a rarity for LEGO Star Wars, but it is a good start to building your First Order army and also getting a few resistance troopers while you're at it. Now you do of course get Captain Phasma, two flame troopers, two regular first order storm troopers, and of course two resistance fighters, uh, one male, one female. So you get a diverse set of characters and you can get a little bit of opposition for this troop carrier, although they're not really going to stand a chance, are they? But let's jump into the figures. Now we do of course get a shiny Captain Phasma here in a set of First Order armor, except it is very shiny and silver. Now this is basically just any old set of First Order armor where you have your little chest interior there for some extra tools, basically just a belt with supplies. It's nothing too special, but it's basically silverified in this kind of shiny light gray. It's not silver, but it'll do for the Lego designers there. Now we do have a little bit of detailing on the helmet as well with some black. It's nothing too crazy but at least it's there. There's nothing special about the head because it is just a black head but the back does show off the little cape that Captain Phasma gets which is an exclusive cape for Captain Phasma because of the way that her cape is designed having a little red lining but the back is nothing to really behold. Having the little back canister and also a few little details, but it's nothing too special. We also get two First Order Stormtroopers. There is basically no difference apart from the coloring and the main difference, they actually have a head. Even if it's just an angry trooper, just angry face with nothing too special about it, at least it's a face. The back also exactly the same, in case you were wondering. Now, the only, like, unique character, well, they have come out in other sets, but they're pretty special, considering you do get two of them, is going to be these flame troopers. Now, I have attached a little bit of a flame accessory onto this one, which is why I'm showcasing them a little bit more. Kind of adds a little bit of realism to the flame trooper. Now, the flame trooper does come with a lot of detailing, starting off with their legs. They have a lot more just differentiation in their knee pads there with a lot more black detailing as well as a little bit of white still in there well it's primarily white but uh, you get the point it does look great they have a little bit of ammo or something special over there don't know what it is it could be a little bit of just extra pouches could be a little bit of snack that they're saving for later who really knows but uh, moving on up they have a little bit of a different armor plating which uh, looks more similar to that of a jet trooper but uh, it is a little bit of its own because it doesn't have the detailings of a jet trooper which is still pretty interesting now their helmet is special in the fact that it's not the same it does have these little breathing tubes and some lining with a very thin slot for the eyes so it is very different compared to normal uh, little first order troopers they also for all their pyrotechnic needs they need themselves a little bit of canisters to store all that propane that they'll need for their little flamethrower, so that's where the little back accessory does come in. Now, they do have themselves an angry clone head, however, the back is not too much to behold. But then again, you also do have those flame canisters on the back, so it does make a little bit of sense why there isn't that much detail. But that's the flame trooper. Now, we can't forget about our, our resistance troopers, which is why up first we do have the female resistance trooper, because they don't actually have names for some reason. Now, this uh, character does have some dark olive pants with a little bit of a tool belt and a tool strap. Now, they do have a mixture of tan and this kind of cloth armor, which is also a coloration of this, like, darkish tan light brown, which does look good in the color combination altogether. Now, they do have some brownish hair with a ponytail out the back, and their expression is a bit neutral. They don't really have too much to say or express, in other words, but they're there, they're here, and it's good to see an extra minifigure when we can. Now, this here character does have themselves a ponytail as well, but they do have a happier expression on the other side, with a little bit more detailing across the strap, but less detailing on the belt. They also do have 
the little bit of the cloth armor coming back and just making a very nice looking back print. They, nor they normally don't put this much detailing into a back print, but this one did turn out very well and feels very fleshed out, which is good. Now we do have one more figure, which is also looking very stern from their facial expression. They do have some dark brown pants with a little bit of a armor vest there, mostly having a bit of that darker olive, but looks a lot more burnished. So you can definitely see that darker coloration, whereas we had a darker olive uh, for the pants on our previous character, but this is really like a dark olive mixed with like a dark tan, or it could just be a full on dark tan, but it feels like it has a little bit of that olive year color, which is pretty good or pretty nice, depending on how you see it. But they do have a little bit more of a different style, kind of like a heavy duty backpack just being tossed on them, which is pretty nice. And then they have a little bit of an eagle hair strip where it kind of just goes down, has a point and then goes out to the sides, which is also pretty nice, just kind of a nice character overall. No second face, but they kind of just have some more straps there on the back with again that coloring just to kind of fully flesh out. This character doesn't feel as fully fleshed out though. There's still a very nice minifigure inclusion, but they don't feel as fulfilling or just as full and fully processed as the previous one did. Now this set does have a lot to offer. From the top we do have a little bit of a headlight. Uh, there are a few more lights on either side, but there's only one on top. We do have some spring-loaded shooters up at the top here, which are pretty nice. We have ourselves a rotating stud shooter cannon, which you can access by opening this hatch and having someone either go sit back down or just pop up with a little bit of a control panel to use. It's pretty simple. They will be a little bit short. Uh, however, you can stand them up so that they feel a little bit more capable. However, you're probably going to have to push it all the way down and you still might have a little bit of a hard time. Uh, we've just got our, yep, it, it, close enough, really, close enough, that should, that should do it right there. We also do have this weird little angling here for this back section, it's nothing too special, but we also do have the main little compartment here for our operator, which also does again have a little bit of a computer there, which you can access, put them back inside, and you can have them operating. It's pretty exposed, so basically if you get shot Right about in this compartment, you're basically your entire transport is decommissioned and going to have a bad day. We also do have a lot of good side detailing, which is pretty nice. You get yourself a decent amount of side detailing, some lights, and it feels fully fleshed out. The back looks really good with these specially designed engines here, and they just really tie everything together with a little bit of a switch at the back right here using this Technic rod to extend and detract the ramp so that you can have it closed and open the other side also mimicking the same detailing with the front ramp now being opened allowing you to dispel all your troopers you can of course take off this large segment here and reveal the inside where you have a little bit of sticker detailing at the back and just some clips for weapons and some space for your troops you can easily fit a decent amount of stormtroopers clone troopers basically anything that you want and then seal it up you do have some extra lights just in case you need them especially if it's like extra foggy or something you can definitely see where you're going but also reveal to everybody where you're going so there is that but it's nothing too crazy it's definitely a nice and open troops transport where you definitely have a lot of space to work with and just a lot of stuff that you can do with it which makes it very nice closing that up very sealed and just it's a very nice little ship it's compact it definitely has some places which feel out of place and a little bit strange for the design wise but for first order sequel trilogy sets this is definitely one of the ones that i would actually recommend picking up because it has a lot of versatility for both play and display because it's very interesting design you know you don't really see ships that look like this and you can kind of just take off uh this little top part you take off these little shooters and uh, maybe replace those with a little bit. And you basically have just kind of this sleek looking tank. And realistically, you can just polish it up a bit more, but it does genuinely just look pretty interesting like that. And you've got yourself a little bit of versatility in how you want to display it. Of course, most people will probably just pop all those elements back and just have it displayed normally. 
but it does give you a few options, which is always nice. Options are great. Options are very welcome. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.